Starting today, the big theme parks are closing the gates and they are shut down due to this outbreak. This move coming just a short time after an NBA player tested positive for the coronavirus. We met with the superintendent of APS over the last hour and they talked about all the things they were putting in place to keep schools open. Within about five minutes before we went on the air, they came out and they said all public schools in the entire state will be closed. And a lot of dresses are made in China, so any disruption in the supply chain could lead to disappointment. I mean, imagine not getting your dress for your big day. Players were escorted to the locker rooms. This delay went on for about 30 minutes. Then the NBA made the announcement that the game had been postponed to a later date, but now we know the NBA season has been suspended. It was nuts, and there were still a lot of questions as to why was it canceled. And what we found out very shortly thereafter is that jazz player Rudy Gobert had tested positive for the coronavirus here in Oklahoma City. So essentially, as this news started to come down, we were all watching, seeing the Thunder game being postponed. The fans were waiting. They had the halftime entertainment come out very early to try to entertain the crowd. So all of this news started to come down and we started to receive tips from sources on the inside that this is what's going on. And now we're learning of another case, Donovan Mitchell, who was inside the Chesapeake Energy Arena that night. He also has now tested positive for the coronavirus. And the day before that game, he visited one of our local high schools. He visited the day before the game, obviously not knowing that he had the coronavirus or knowing that he had been exposed to the coronavirus through his teammate. According to the superintendent of that school district, since he wasn't showing symptoms, they are just monitoring them and not administering tests at this time. A couple of days before the Utah Jazz came here, Rudy Gobert and members of the Utah Jazz organization were talking with the media, and Rudy Gobert joked about being sick, was making jokes about the coronavirus. After the press conference ended, you'll see in this viral video, he makes a point to touch every single microphone and recorder before leaving the room. Two days later, here in Oklahoma City, he tests positive for the coronavirus. I do want to mention he has since apologized, saying that, that it was reckless and saying that his story should maybe serve, that we all need to be taking this a little bit more seriously. He apologized to everyone he possibly put at risk. He also mentioned that he was embarrassed by this. And since then, we know that he exposed his teammate, Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell has also come out with a statement kind of getting at that, saying we need to all behave more responsibly and take this more seriously. Rudy Gobert has come out and said that he's going to pledge $500,000 for coronavirus relief efforts, people who may be out of a job right now. That 500 is going to be split among Utah, Oklahoma City, and France. Since then, we've seen countless organizations and leagues cancel, postpone, delay. It's just been a total ripple effect, and the catalyst was right here in Oklahoma City Wednesday night. Walt Disney World Parks, Universal, SeaWorld, and Legoland all shut down. The closures will last through the end of the month, all due to concerns over the coronavirus. We actually flew our chopper up over Disney yesterday. I did see an image of the empty park, and that was pretty surreal to see. To see Disney without any people, I mean, our, you know, our most magical place on Earth, and completely empty. It's just, it is surreal. This is already having a huge impact on the tourism industry and on Florida as a whole, because Florida, of course, depends on its tourism industry. I mean, that's a huge draw here in the Sunshine State. The companies, Disney and Universal, they are pledging to take care of their workers. Disney is the area's number one employer. It employs the most people of any company in Central Florida, and I think actually possibly in the state. So we're talking thousands of employees affected here. And while the parks and resorts are shut down, Disney says it will still pay all of its cast members. It calls its employees cast members, its full-time employees. And Universal Orlando hourly workers will also be paid for any work scheduled through the end of March. I talked to a Lyft driver yesterday who talked about how concerned he is about how he's going to pay his bills. How are the, these workers who also depend on the parks and on the tourists that go to these parks, how are they going to make ends meet in light of this crisis? You know, they're not being taken care of by the major companies. The parks, of course, are the big ones that we think about, but you've got gift shops, you've got restaurants, you have all of these businesses that depend on 
the thousands and thousands of people who come in and out of places like Disney and Universal every day. We've got thousands of kids that every day depend on breakfast, on lunch, and, and some even on, on supper program after school. So this is something that our, our staff is very ready to do. All New Mexico schools have shut down for three weeks now. Uh, so the kids are going to be home for three weeks. And the biggest concern when this came down was uh, meals, because so many families rely on schools as a source of their meals. So what our state is doing, and they have all 89 public schools available as drive through sites. There is definitely a lot of volunteer organizations who are taking this time to you know, kind of do sandwich lines and assemble the meals and then donate them to the schools for these kind of grab and go lines that they have. In fact, Albuquerque Fire Rescue, our fire department here the other day, they uh, went on their Facebook page and they sent all these pictures of them. You know, one was the bread station, one was the turkey station and they were putting them all together and then they donated that to the public schools to kind of keep the supplies um, fresh. As of right now, the public schools at least have come out and said that the three week gap will not be added on to the end of the school year. And there was no plan given for what's gonna happen to that learning time lost. There is a concern there about what is gonna happen to those students and the learning time that will be lost within this three week gap. Some of the private schools have actually come out and said they will be conducting Skype and Zoom classes, but the public schools, right? Because we have just such a wide range of access to the internet at home and what kids have, there's definitely a concern there that um, not all schools would be able to provide that instruction. I, I wouldn't have thought of it. And I think that's the biggest surprise to me is that something that's happening in the world impacts a wedding. Cindy Patterson is a bride in Kansas City and she said everything was ready for the big day. She was excited to marry the love of her life and kind of the unexpected came up. This was at a time when the coronavirus was still overseas, mainly in Asia, and she really didn't give it a second thought. You know, no one thought it was going to impact us here. No one knew what was going to happen yet. But it was two weeks before her wedding day when she got an email from one of her bridesmaids telling her that the manufacturer of the bridesmaids dresses had contacted her saying that the dresses probably weren't going to be ready on time. She called the manufacturer herself and they told her that production was being impacted. Basically, production was halted because of the coronavirus in Asia. I think right now, anything that's being imported is subject to, you know, being impacted by the virus. I know anything, even if you order on Amazon, a lot of it is like, well, you'll get it someday, maybe. We don't know. So I, I think the general thought is just it's now you have to have that as a thought. If you are ordering something online, you have to think, well, could it be impacted by the coronavirus? She also went to a bunch of stores, department stores, trying to cobble together different dresses of the same color, trying to find a solution here. But it was also hard because her bridesmaids were in different cities. She ended up going to Gown Gallery in Kansas City, and they were able to work with her by using dresses they had in stock, and then also uh, they were frantic on the phone, calling designers, seeing what people had in stock, but they were also able to work with a designer who said that they could make any dresses that they needed in that time frame. So she was able to find a solution. She was able to get the dresses uh, in time and have everyone in the same color. Luckily, it was happily ever after for her and her bridesmaids. <laughs> I know that we have had other brides talking about concerns over wedding dresses, um, things like that. Here in Kansas City, it started with no more than a thousand people. That's what the mayor and the county first put out. Then they came back and said, okay, no more than 250 people allowed in a gathering. And now they've said no more than 50 people. So that wipes out most weddings as far as being in person. So I know that in the coming days and weeks, we're gonna hear more and more about brides who are having to totally change their wedding plans, whether it's moving it or making it very, very small. So it still remains to be seen how much this is going to impact weddings and events moving forward, but it's definitely getting worse before it gets better.